cars. They drive the wheels by a chain. On a car, you normally use a prop shaft. So they had to sort that out too. In the bike environment, the front wheel would be here and the rear wheel here. And it would be a chain drive running off of this sprocket, which mounts onto that output shaft. So the actual chain would run here to the rear wheel. In the car situation, we change that by very simply using this sprocket adapter to go onto the output of the engine to allow us to run a prop shaft down to the back of the car. Next, Ian needed to work out how to change the gears on this engine. Motorcyclists move through the gears by clicking a foot pedal up and down. But Ian wanted to mimic the feel of a racing car, which usually has fingertip control of the gears. So he attached a cable from the gear lever at the bottom of the engine to a set of paddles behind the steering wheel. So effectively, we are pulling on either side to effect a shift from the wheel position. So even here, the hand can still reach. This is quite clever. Ian's managed to create the fingertip gear control of a much more expensive car. But Ian's got a bit of a problem. The tonic is so small, the engine doesn't fit. That's the carburettors in their original position from the bike, untouched in the, the angle they would, would come from the bike, uh, which presented us with this problem with the bonnet, which leaves us approximately half to three quarters of an inch too high. That's meant that we've got to then look at a solution to, to rotating the actual carburettors themselves from that position where they started on the bike to a position lower down. In order to do that, we will have to make a bespoke piece to join here to the, to the en engine itself. To sort this problem out, Ian turned to the engineering firm Hemlock to see if they could help. The engineers started by making a plastic prototype of an adapter that would tilt the carburettors downwards. So from so that just pushes straight on. This, this will be a, a nice, a close fit, and the carburetors mount on there. In this case, yeah. they're using trial and error to get the answer. Now I think we're, we're in trouble at this point here. Okay. So and not surprisingly, it didn't work first time. The prototype didn't lower the carburetors enough. Okay. We now. This is the new one that John's making. Based on the results of the plastic prototype, they carved out the final aluminium piece, which hopefully would do the job. And there we have it, at the new angle, in position, and hopefully ready to go. At last, the bonnet fits perfectly and the car is ready to go. Tomorrow's the big day. Will and Colin will drive the tonic for the very first time. After all the choices they've been forced to make, will it still have the performance they want? Will and Colin's big day has arrived. After three long years, they finally get to drive the tonic R. A few final tweaks and everything is ready. Fun, mate. What was it like? Good. <laughs>
I can't describe, actually. It's just like, I can't believe I'm actually driving it. It was, um, I mean, so many times I just sat there and pretended. <laughs> The Tonic R is everything the lads hope for. The acceleration of a Porsche, better looking than a Ferrari, and less than the price of a Vauxhall Vectra. It's like... Oh, God, you know when you've done something for so long and you just, you get in it, it's better than you thought it would be, and you just don't want to break it, but you just want to drive it so much faster. I just felt so confident. It's really easy to drive, Carl. It's just really smooth. And bloody hell, do you hear it? It's just gorgeous. <laughs> it's so much easier. It's so much better. I can't believe we've actually done it. Yeah. It just sounds absolutely amazing. I'm it shaking now. fantastic. Yeah. I'm... My legs <laughs> just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, get I'm getting it. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>